What's up everyone, it's Kadi with Money Vesting. So in this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about a new concept. We have talked about it before, but now it's once again happening. It is starting. So I think it's really important for us to go over that. Um, and I'll be going over some data. I'll be going over some reports that came out literally today that are suggesting um, this, this very phenomenon. So hope you guys enjoyed this video, find it helpful. If you do, make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're just joining us for the first time. We talk a lot about fundamental and technical analysis, stocks and options, and of course, macro analysis as well. And uh, there's gonna be a lot of educational videos also posted from time to time. So a lot of questions have been asked in the last hour or so. Um, a lot of people have been reaching out. Caddy, why was the market down? despite the yields rolling over. So if you come over and take a look at this chart, you'll notice that the 10 year yield pretty much dropped from like 4%, 4.1%. It was trading above 4% at some point, dropped down to 3.8%. And on the day, it was actually down one and a half percent. And yet the markets sold off as well, right? I mean, usually we know that when yields are going higher, right? That's putting pressure on the markets. And as yields go up, markets come down. Why is it that yields are selling off and the markets are coming down? Well, we've talked about this before, and, and this is something that I was kind of concerned about when I shared this spreadsheet with all of you, which is a risk tied versus risk-free rate of return and how the, the 10-year yield, the treasuries didn't really have that attractiveness um, and, and there wasn't really any competition from the yields for the last, I would say, you know, six, seven years up until 2021, they didn't really, they weren't appealing, right? Because there was a premium attached to holding on to the market, right? Holding on to the S&P 500, holding on to real estate, holding on to individual stocks. There was an appeal, there was an incentive to hold on to those assets. However, that has diminished significantly over the last couple of years because of a concept called flight to quality. We have talked about this before on the channel, but this is kind of like a refresher for those who already know, and this could be a new topic for people who don't understand what flight to quality is, but it's really just a concept and this idea of investors literally flocking away from riskier investments over, over to safer ones, okay? It only takes one event. It only takes one trigger for that to happen because of all this uncertainty. Why invest in the markets and hope to earn 5% or 5.5% when you can invest in U.S. treasuries and guaranteed earn 5% or 5.2%. It doesn't make sense. If you take a look at the rational investor, why would we take on risk when we can earn the same rate of return risk-free, right? That's the concept of flight to quality when many investors sell higher risk investments and purchase safer ones. So they're running away from high yield, high risk investments and moving over to low yield, low risk investments. But in this case, in this case, it's not low yield, it's high yield. Because we've got the 10 year yield yielding and the two year yield yielding, the six month treasury bill yielding the same as the S&P 500 dividend yield, earnings yield, earnings yield, which is you know higher than the dividend yield of the S&P 500. And you've got uh, earnings yield and the T-bill paying you the same amount. So it's not running towards a low yield, low risk investment. It's running towards a high yield or equivalent yield, I should say. So equivalent yield, low risk investment. So that is what flight to quality means. And that's exactly what we saw today as yield move inversely to price. So as price moves up, yield comes down. As price moves down, yield goes up. And today, since yields were lower, well, what does that tell you? There was an inflow. There was a liquidity shift in the markets away from equities over to bonds, treasuries. Um, and, and, and as a result, as prices went up, because there's a lot of demand, yields went down. And that's exactly one of the one of the reasons why I'm long TMF is because as there is going to be flight to quality, there's going to be shift away from equities over to bonds. Demand is going to put prices higher, yields lower as yields come down TMF benefits. That's the thesis behind why I'm long bonds at the moment. So why, of course, I've sent out alerts and my plan is to bring out, you know, build a sizable position in bond ETFs to continue to take advantage of this flight to quality shift and this liquidity, you know, reallocation in the markets right now is what we're seeing. So you'll notice that this is, again, a report from today from BlackRock. Investors pulled a near record sums from corporate bond exchange ETFs in February as robust U.S. economic inflation data 
fueled expectations for future rate hikes. So what you'll notice is that investment grade high bond corporate bond ETFs suffered a combined net outflow of $8.3 billion in February. And uh, they pretty much went into government bonds. So investors instead sought refuge in the government bond ETFs, largely U.S. Treasuries funds, which sucked in a net $10.9 billion. So it's not rocket science. I mean, this is not complicated. What we're really understanding and trying to analyze here is where is the liquidity going, right? Because there, there's going to be a flight fight for liquidity here, right? And, and there's going to be a competition for yields because as the market, the bond market gives you the same yield as a stock market, there's really no uh, no questions asked, right? There's going to be a no-brainer investment over on yields. And, and that's as a result is going to be a fight for li liquidity uh, in the bond market as, as investors shift away from equities over to bonds. So we came into February with the risk on and a high credit uh, and high yield in, in particular in, in demand. Um, in, in the U.S., investors came in with the optimism that the Federal Reserve would stop raising rates. Uh, there has been an expectation that the rate rises are going to continue in the coming months. And therefore, there has been a flight to quality, right? So flight to quality, in particular, short duration treasury products because of how much six month one year and two year T-bills are paying you. Um, and markets are now pricing in about 5.5% in U.S. interest rates at the terminal rate moving forward. And demand for corporate bond ETFs plunges now. And it's, uh, again, down over 8.9, close to $9 billion investment grade. And of course, high yield. Because think about what you're doing, right? If you are taking in a high yield, you are taking on more risk, right? Remember, I showed you guys a linear chart and it really depends who ended up watching that video or not. But I talked about a linear relationship between, uh, between risk and reward. If there's high risk, there's high reward. If there's low risk, there's low reward. With high yields, corporate bonds, you're definitely taking on high risk with high yields because number one, companies need to pay back their coupons to bondholders, right? If you are buying a corporate bond, you're theoretically just lending out your money to the to the company, right? If the company goes bust, there goes your investment, right? So in this higher interest rate environment, it's becoming more and more difficult for companies to finance their debt obligations. And if they don't, don't pay up, that's why they're giving you the higher yield to attract more inflows, right? If somebody's, if some company's paying you 15% yield, yes, there's going to be a lot of attractiveness towards that 15%, but it's also going to have that high risk. With U.S. Treasuries, little to no risk, right? It's all risk-free because it's backed by the U.S. government. Of course, there's some, you know, speculation that the U.S. government is going to default on its debt, but I don't think it's going to happen. I think the Congress is going to raise the debt ceiling sooner or later. And against the black uh, backdrop here, Kareem Shedid said that investment ready BlackRock iShares, um, the credit flow momentum unfound, uh, unwound in February as spreads widened with the higher the duration sensitivity, the more the hit. And uh, the data shows that pretty much high yield corporate bond ETFs like HYG uh, bled about $5.1 billion and sister investment grade fund LQD, we lost about $4.6 billion and the other junk bond high yield ETFs lost $2.2 billion and a lot of them went into short treasuries, treasury bond ETFs, SHW and SGOV, which again, are very, very short duration bonds. If you take a look at their chart, they're just straight up uh, because because they, again, move in very, very small percentages and they also pay you a dividend yield of 2%. Um, now, another really interesting article came out today is the U.S. stocks drop on financial worries as traders flock to treasuries. And this, again, was another report that pretty much mentioned that uh, investors or traders are piling into U.S. government debt with yields on short dated treasury bonds falling sharply. And as a result, as prices went up, demand went up, yields came down and uh, the two-year treasury fell 19 basis points. And of course, we had the uh, the 10-year drop down to 3.855%, down 1.38%. This is going to be our chart for all U.S. treasuries. You can see that every single one of them had a take down. Uh, you'll notice that two-year came down to 4.8%. We got six-month at 5.3, still pushing higher, surprisingly. We got the one-year 5.1%. And three months still pushing up. So shorter duration, still pushing higher. But investors are really locking in that two-year rate at over 5%. And this is what happens, right? It's like a race to the bottom. Because if, if investors flock towards treasuries now, they lock in that rate. And investors coming in behind them lock in a lower rate. Because, for example, if, if, if somebody goes in there and buys a two-year treasury now, they're going to lock in at 4.8% because that's the rate that, that's, that's been quoted um, at the moment. So it's kind of like, you know... You got to be, you got to, you got to assess and analyze that opportunity. And of course, be able to take advantage of that, 
as investors are kind of moving and shifting liquidity away from equities over to bonds. So this is something that is happening, and I think it's going to be more and more apparent. It's going to be you know mainstream moving forward, considering how high the yields are, and it, and really that premium has diminished over time over the last couple of years here, especially when you are comparing it to the aggregates of you know the S and P 500 real estate caps, the dividend yield. It just, it, you know, from a rational perspective, it just doesn't really make sense to be invested in equities at the moment, just on an aggregate basis. Still, it makes sense from an individual stock basis, but but it really has, you know, diminished that premium or that incentive of holding on to stocks when there's risk-free rate as high as 5%. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did, make sure that you drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and also check out the Discord and the Patreon links down below if you're interested in joining us, getting access to all the alerts and the trade ideas and swing trading alerts and all that stuff. As always, happy investing, and I'll see you all in the next video.